Our eldest Paul Rose, we have a special update for you on Hurricane Florence here live on ClickOnDetroit.com. The storm is just continuing to be the monster that we've talked about and that we've said it would be. Uh, latest update just in literally a moment ago from the National Hurricane Center. The winds around the center of the storm are blowing continuously still at 105 miles per hour. So it's still a Category 2 storm. You may recall yesterday it was a Category 3 and 4 storm. It did weaken overnight, but don't be confused by that is still a very, very dangerous storm for reasons that we will show you in a moment. But you can see here on the high resolution satellite imagery, this storm is just swirling along and you can see a general track right here heading right toward Wilmington or maybe a little north of Wilmington. So everything so far is playing out on schedule in terms of the hurricane's motion. All right, let's go on and talk about radar because what you're seeing here are clouds. Radar shows you actual precipitation, a little better uh, picture of the structure of the storm. You can see the eye of the storm right here. And believe it or not, despite all of this fury with these 100 plus mile an hour winds, if you were in the very center of this thing right here, you'd see partly sunny skies, no wind. It would be like a really nice day, but that would only last for about 20 or 30 minutes. And then you'd get into the intense wind on the other side of the eye. So what we have is, a, you can see a very circular motion around this storm. This is a very deep area of low pressure. And already these bands are now hitting the eastern North Carolina shoreline and the outer banks. Let's zoom in and show you what we're talking about. So uh, we're these little lines, you see these little lines right here. These things right here are called barrier islands. They're basically uh, basically little islands that are off the coast. And so these are particularly dangerous. And, and I've heard that there are some people who have foolishly chosen to stay on these barrier islands. They're only a, a couple of feet above sea level, and we're talking about incredible storm surge that we'll talk about in a minute. But in any event, you see these intense rain bands now moving over the barrier islands, and it's in these bands that you see the most intense wind gusts, and those only get worse as the storm gets closer. Now, let me show you something. The radar actually can also see wind, and what you're seeing here, the green, the, the radar is right here. That's Moorhead City right there. The, the green is blowing toward the radar, and these reds and purples are blowing away from the radar. So you can kind of see the circulation right here with the radar. Now, you see this little blue point here. I've just kind of selected this point on one of the barrier islands here. The radar is estimating wind of 67 miles per hour. Now keep in mind, hurricane force starts at 74 miles per hour. So we're already seeing near hurricane force wind or wind gusts on these barrier islands here. But look at, see these colors get a little brighter, almost a little yellowish out here. Take a look at this. The radar is estimating out here, out here, wind of 105 miles per hour. And that's very consistent with what the Hurricane Hunter aircraft are seeing when they fly in and out of this storm. So, so it, the worst is yet to come because as I showed you earlier, this whole thing is moving like this. And so we had a 67 mile an hour gust here, 105 mile an hour wind here, and it's all moving this way. All right, let's move along. I want to show you something about the size of the storm. And this is one of the things that makes this hurricane so dangerous. Now, let me first explain the colors here. Red is wind that is blowing continuously at hurricane force. So that's 74 miles an hour or above. That's continuously blowing wind at 74 miles an hour or above. This orange color right here, those are hurricane force wind gusts. So in other words, the wind is kind of bursting to 74 miles an hour or greater, but not blowing continuously at that speed, but you're getting gusts to that speed. And then this yellow here, this is tropical storm force wind gusts and tropical storm force winds start at 40 miles per hour. So look at the size of this storm. Now let's advance the storm, show you the movement of the storm and what happens to this wind field. Here we are overnight into 5 a.m. tomorrow, Look at this, this large part of the coastline getting hurricane force wind and then the gusts, this, this orange, I measured this orange area right here, it's 173 miles wide. So this is a large part of coastline getting at least hurricane force wind gusts. And to put this in perspective for you, remember, when our National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm warning for a thunderstorm coming through, that's for wind that is expected to be 58 miles per hour or greater, and that's just a brief gust of wind. They're gonna be seeing that for hours and hours and hours on end. You can't, if you've never been in one of these things, you cannot possibly imagine 
what that is like. It is absolutely terrifying. Now let's continue the motion of the storm and you can see it's going to kind of take a, a path down toward Myrtle Beach. So Myrtle Beach looks like it's going to get hit with a category one hurricane. I've been to Myrtle Beach. It is a, a place with enormous numbers of golf courses and that's a lot of trees and there's going to be a tremendous amount of tree damage down there as well as in other parts of the coastline. And something else, by the way, Remember how all summer we talked about how wet it's been on the East Coast? They just got stuck in that pattern with all that rain? Well, the soil is extra saturated. And think about this. Tree roots kind of anchor themselves in that soil. So if you soften up the soil with a lot of rain, you're going to have a lot more trees coming down when you have this wind move in. So there is going to be considerable tree damage because of not just the wind, but also the very saturated soil conditions. And so as this storm continues to push inland, watch what happens. You'll finally, as it moves off and away from the waters, it finally starts to weaken, becomes a tropical storm. But again, look at the enormous area. I can't even stretch my arms that long. This is an enormous area getting wind gusts well over 40 miles per hour. So this is a very large storm and its impacts are gonna be felt over a very, very large chunk of real estate. So let's move these maps along now. I wanna talk about, we've just talked about wind, but water is usually the thing that people don't really think about, but you need to because it's the number one thing that not only causes damage, but kills people with hurricanes. This is the rainfall forecast for the duration of the storm. It's gonna moving, it's gonna move very slowly. It's moving right now to the northwest at 10 miles an hour, but it's gonna start slowing down as it gets inland here. And so that's just gonna keep this intense rain over the same area. This is obscene. See this white color right here? This here is three, 36 inches, three feet of rain. Think about that. Th 36 inches of rain, if we were to get it in, in terms of snow, that amount of moisture would be 360 inches of snow. 360 inches of snow. That's how much moisture is going to fall from this storm. And that's, that's, by the way, that's widespread. There are going to be locally heavier amounts of rain than that. So keep in mind that this is going to be a tremendous water producer. And then this pink color here, this is two feet of rain. That's 24 inches of rain. And look at this. It extends from north of Wilmington almost all the way to uh, Cape Hatteras is up here. So probably over to about Moorhead City, it extends all the way down to just north of Charleston here. So you're talking about a tremendous amount of rain falling from the storm. That by itself is going to cause extraordinary, devastating, catastrophic flooding. But there's a whole nother factor that we need to talk about. Take a look at the wind field around this storm. Okay, here's the wind. This is the wind blowing around the storm. What I want you to notice is this area right here. You see this wind that's just rushing in towards shore? Two things to notice. First of all, these bright colors here are very strong winds here. And what you're doing is you're taking ocean water and you're driving that water toward the shore. Okay, that is called storm surge. What it does, it kind of builds up a big wall of water. In some places, it's going to be 9 to 12 feet, even 13 feet high. And when the high tide comes in, that comes in roughly every 12 hours. So when the high tide comes in, uh, you, you get you get that amount of rise in the water on top of the rise from the high tide. So keep in mind that there's going to be a, a push, a wall of water pushing in that in some cases that's going to be up, up to the second story, not the top, but up to the bottom of the second story of some buildings. Moving water is very, very destructive. And to give you an idea of just how powerful it is, just a, few, just a few inches of moving water, fast moving water will knock you off your feet. And when you get up to just like, like 12 inches of moving water, you can start moving cars. 12 to 24 inches, you start moving cars. So you now take maybe 12, 13 feet of moving water and you're now causing tremendous structural damage, not to mention all of the, the flooding and things like that. So let's put this in motion, show you what happens. Because remember this area right here, the, the wind that's pushing on the shore here. Now here's the storm by uh, tomorrow afternoon. So somewhere here in the Wilmington area is the center of the storm. But notice we still have this strong wind pushing into the central North Carolina coast. Let's now push this map further ahead into the day on Saturday. So now we have it down approaching Charleston, but we still have this strong onshore flow from the circulation of this storm pushing that water inland here on the central North Carolina coast. This is really, really bad news because a lot of hurricanes that kind of come and they go, 
This one is going to be, look at these conditions. We've just taken you from today into Saturday afternoon, and they are still getting very strong wind pushing ocean water ashore. And then notice that area does shift a little further south as well. So areas further south on that North Carolina coastline. So you take the combination of two, three feet of rain falling, and then this storm surge blowing inland, you've got a catastrophic water event. So again, everybody focuses on the wind, but with these storms, this is the, basically, Remember Hurricane Harvey last year, how it kind of stalled out and was moving real slow and, and all the devastation around Houston? This is the East Coast's Hurricane Harvey. They have not had a storm like this. They're going to see rainfall amounts that they have never seen there along the Carolinas. So we are staying well on top of the storm for you. We know some of you have had travel plans. I've already heard from people who have travel plans down that way. People have property down this way. People have relatives and friends down this way. So we know hurricanes are important to you. So we will keep up to date with the very latest information. We will keep you posted right here on clickondetroit.com. And don't forget, if you don't have the local forecasters weather app, I urge you download that app right now. It is absolutely free. You go to the app store, you just search under WDIV. Why get the app about the hurricane? Because our app has one of the best hurricane pages you will find anywhere. Once you have the app, you open it up, you go to the menu and you choose hurricanes. You'll see the track of the storm. You you tap any dot and it'll tell you in the storm's forecast path all the details of what will be happening at that moment in time. It is a tremendous, tremendous app to have. And if you know people down south, urge them to download our app too because it has tremendous information about not just our hurricanes here in America, but we have a real strong super typhoon that's going to hit the northern Philippines in the next few days, so uh, places around the world also. So that's the very latest of what we have for you here with uh, Hurricane Florence. Again, we will stay on top of the situation and keep you updated right here on clickondetroit.com.